see, one of my pet peeves is standing ovations. And I'm so glad you have these pet peeves. I love, I absolutely agree with you. Most of the big, I, the big because stuff. they mean nothing anymore. Yeah. Everybody yeah. stands up at the end of any piece of shit show. Because, I don't know, because I paid 250 bucks for the ticket, I suppose. I don't know where that started either, along with the clapping for the big high note. I don't know. But to sit in that theater in New York just a couple weeks ago, come from away, last note, the lights come down. The lights hadn't even come down. The entire place was on its feet. Now that's a standing. Nobody had to coax anybody to jump out of their friggin' seats. I started to cry. <laughs> it was crazy. It was electric. It's a very down played, as far as production goes, as far as production values, you know? It's just one setting. They move those chairs around. There is a little revolve on it, but chairs, that's it. But maybe there should be big hydraulics and big fuselages coming down and 747s and fuselages and big lights and maybe big... No. See, that's part no. of this Canadian stuff. I mean, the Australians call it the tall poppy syndrome. Uh, you go in, it's the way you are not treated well in an addition. And that's the, that's the not so good part of this Canadian instinct. But the other side of the Canadian thing that's the better half is saying you don't need it. The story is important. The bad side is you going in and saying, well, okay, we want you to read for this. That's the not so good part. But the good part, or the, no, that's wrong, not good, bad, I don't mean that. But the, mm -hmm. the part that moves us down the road narratively is that saying, I don't need big effects to make that story powerful. The story's powerful. When I was doing Les Mis in Montreal, I, I had a week off and I took a trip to New York and I thought I wanted to go see some shows. And I went to see Miss Saigon because it's the same writer composer and I thought I should see that show and I had heard all about the helicopter in that show. I thought it would come swooping in and all you had were those beams of light that mm -hmm. were coming from, and the sound <gasps> super loud all over your head in the theater <gasps> oh! and that was 20 million times more effective it was and you felt for those people behind that fence. You could just see those beams of light and hear the sound. Oh my God, it was palpable. It was exciting. So why didn't the producers cut the helicopter? No then? kidding. Why? You tell me. Because we need that to impress our audiences now because they've paid 200 bucks. They gotta have some gizmos up there. I don't know. It's gotten away from what actually, that was more effective. Come on. I think the smaller theaters are doing that right, kind of stuff right, more, right. definitely. Frankly, lighting, just lighting, damn it, you know, can do it. Well, it's I was so think freaking effective. The more gizmos you have, the less faith you have in the story, right? The more gizmos you have, the less secure you are about the story you're telling. Mm. The more secure, you, like Louise over here, the secure person, the person who knows exactly what you want, the more secure you are, the less you have to do to dress it up. I mean, that's just what it is. Oh, and yeah. I, I can't figure out why we're so insecure. Why do I we go to the movies and I've got to see 420,000 orcs coming at me, all CGI? Why do I have to see that? Well, because they're probably totally insecure. They can't tell the story any other way. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that's my sick box. But there you go. I agree with you.